ladies and gentlemen. Only the best internet radio station <laughs> in the world. Oh, yeah. No, the universe. Dakota iRadio Network. Back by popular demand. Woo! Now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. I'm your DJ. DJ Barbecue. It's done over 400 events. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air. This is Uncut Live, and I'm DJ Barbecue, powered by KBAC.Rocks. Rock radio the way rock radio should be. Midwest All Pro Wrestling. Go to MidwestAllProWrestling.com. Get tickets and feel the excitement. Jekyll and Hyde Barbecue, our brothers from another mother. They make barbecue so good, mm, they'll put a smile on your face. And Remedy Brewing Company, it's the remedy for what ails you. up code i radio network this is your boy dj barbecue happy new year we're finally gonna have an interview for uncut live and what better time and better guests to do the interview for the new year at 2020 which be top-notch entertainment of the world these gentlemen are the top-notch entertainment of the united states of every country of the world and you going to be surprised with these next guests because they know what they're doing. They drop albums. They release CDs. Uh, they're from the land. We are going to interview DJ JK and the guy that is from the land, Cole Bratland, a.k.a. EZC. Guys, thank you for coming on to the show. How you guys been doing? Oh, oh man, we've been doing pretty good. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, no, right, a lot of fun. No Finally, problem. Uh, Finally coming on. I've been listening since uh, this day one since so I started putting out these, man. Right, right on. Right on. Thank you very much. Uh, let's get right to it. Uh, what have you guys been up to that the listeners don't know? Uh, you have a lot of uh, fans, but there are some of them out there uh, that we have a reach to that may not know you. So why don't you give them a little taste about Top Notch Entertainment of the World? Uh, well, uh, right now we are just kind of grinding away. Uh we have, uh, we got Easy C over here. You know, he's been writing up rhymes, working on a mixtape, trying to get that out this year. Uh, working on getting some merchandise out there, get some top-notch entertainment gear. Um, and then just uh, training and getting ready for the next show, January 26th at the Icon Lounge. Right on, right on. And an epic venue, an epic event to start off the new year. Uh, where did you guys start? Where did you guys get your training to get to this point? Have you always been at Midwest All Pro Wrestling? Yes, we yeah. have. Yeah, we started um, the April of 2018 is when we started. Uh, it was a long night of maybe a couple uh, adult beverages. And Cole and I finally decided to, you know, we, we were sitting front row, that front row crew, for about a year and a half. We were just watching the show. Shout out to the front row trash. crew. And uh, finally we decided, you know what, we're not doing much sitting here. Let's uh, let's sign up for this this camp and get trained by Nick Eugene Densmore at Midwest All Pro Wrestling. And we've been doing it ever since. Right on, right on. Yeah, you were mentioning the front row crew. Uh, I remember going to shows. I've actually previously met you guys uh, before you guys were starting to train. And that front row crew is very popular, well-known. Uh, if anybody hasn't heard about them, uh, you probably will the closer you get to the, the Midwest. They are very well-known as the front row crew. They have a tendency to uh, amplify if you want to say the actual entertainment uh, of the venue that night. Um, that being said, what have some of your uh, goals been since you started uh, training in 2018? Well, it was uh, primarily, you know, for me personally, getting into uh, ring shape was definitely not easy. Second day of training, I severely pulled some abdominal muscles, and the same night, 
Five minutes later, Cole actually tore abdominal muscles, Cole. Ow. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, put me out for a couple weeks, but, you know, it all comes with it, you know. You just got to keep pushing through everything and just, uh. What did you have to do to get uh, get back into the swing of things uh, after pulling an abdominal muscle? Because that has to that has to hurt. Oh, it did. It, oh. it did indeed. It was just a lot of uh, just rest, basically. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so yeah, it's take everything easy. So you know, some of the listeners uh, probably haven't ever stepped in a in a ring to train. Uh, give them a little taste on like you know. Uh, what it was like. I mean, there's obviously people have an idea in their head mentally that they think, oh, this is how training is going to go. It's probably going to be easy peasy, uh, lemon squeezy. But um, what is it really like? Do you, I mean, did it change your mentality of what training really was? Or were you like, okay, yeah, I already knew that this was going to be this hard. Well, it, it's definitely not a foam mattress. Right, right. I'll tell you that much. It is, it is, it is metal. It is wood little bit of padding the ropes are steel cables and it don't it, it'll beat you down but you get used to it right um being in a ring at training facility such as midwest all pro uh training facility what was it like was it i mean you have the top like no pun intended and maybe it is the top notch of of trainers uh, of, of a coach in the industry and you have that available to your, you know, your, you know, capabilities here. What was that like to know that you're going to be trained by that top-notch guy in 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 the industry? Nick is, you know, the absolute best. You look at the guys that he trains, such as John Cena, Braun Strowman, Dave Batista, you know, all in the WWE. Some of them future Hall of Famers, World Champions, and knowing that he's readily available right there to answer our questions. Um, you know, help us improve what we do to make us the best that we can be. It's it's like no other. It's yeah, as you said, no fun. It is top notch. Right. No other words to say about that. I mean, it is amazing. <laughs> well, okay, so w we got you both here. We're talking about both of you, and you guys are you know giving me uh, knowledge. Uh, you know, why don't we go individually? We'll start with uh, Easy C. Give us some of your backstory for the listeners that don't know you. Where where did Easy C come from? Uh, yeah, I grew up in uh, Valley Springs, just a little town. Uh, was it like south, like, about east, of, east. Yeah, of, about east of Sioux Falls. Walked to Minnesota in five minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just walked to Minnesota in five minutes and five stuff. minute jog. Yeah, I just kind of grew up there. Always. Right, and uh, yeah, you know, just wa always watched wrestling as a kid, you know, and then all of a sudden, yeah, just started. I went to school in Brandon, I uh, didn't go to college, just went straight to working, and then all of a sudden, yeah, got an opportunity to start wrestling, and you know, I jumped on it as soon as I could. Where did you get the niche? Where did you get that, uh, that, that you know, uh, infection of that positive pro wrestling uh, likeness? Uh, man, I just uh, I, a lot of it was just like almost like nostalgic for me, you know, like when I was young, you know, like every Monday, you know, me and my brother would just sit with my mom, she'd throw on wrestling. And then next thing I know, it's like 10 o'clock time for bed. And then I, I just couldn't wait until, you know, the next wrestling show that I could watch. I think it was, you know, SmackDown was on Friday back then uh, before they moved. And, you know, I just I always watched like Sunday Night Heat before the pay-per-views. Like, it was just like a nostalgic thing for me. Right. Uh, who were some of the wrestlers that you really uh, kind of uh, attracted to that you kind of maybe used uh, as inspiration in your training now? Mm. Ooh. Oh, I'm trying to think here. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Dolph Ziggler. Uh, like his like, earlier work. Uh, I think he's just underused now. Um, to hear. Rey Mysterio was my guy back in the day. Uh, who else? Uh, there's Randy Orton, Batista. I was a huge Evolution guy. Um, yeah, you know, if, if they got everybody's blood boiling, you know, they're they're basically my guy. Well, a lot of top-notch talent that's uh, um, inspired you, that's for sure. Uh, DJ JK, what about you? Give a little backstory for the listeners that uh, aren't too close to the Midwest 
that need to know know about you? Oh man, well uh, I've had a love for wrestling since I was a little kid. I actually grew up right outside of Valley Springs, um, and one of my first memories was I believe my mom actually won tickets uh, to go to, for a wrestling show off the radio. And there's photos of it of me and a, a macho giant green macho man Randy Savage hat. I want to say it was, old, uh, it was I want to say it was a WCW show that rolled through back in had to be '98. Yep. Of about four or five. Was and, that that uh, Sioux Falls Arena? Yep. Was that a Saturday yep. afternoon? I believe so. I was there. It's a little hazy because this was you know 21 years ago. Right, 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 right. But. You know, I kind of loved it ever since. Um, my parents always told me it was two guys for me. It was always Sting and what I called the Woo guy. Oh, which yeah. Which was uh, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Yep. That's what I was, you know. And then just constantly watching Raws and flipping back and forth to Raw and WCW. Um, one of the old uh, things I remembered was the it was a WCW Nitro that was promoting Santa with muscles. Yes. That's one of the things I remember there. And then right after it was Thunder in Paradise, which was always my jam when I was a very small child. But yeah, I started, you know, grew up, kind of kind of fell out of wrestling for a while, moved into Valley Springs, started hanging out with uh, Easy C over here and trying wrestling moves in the backyard. You know the, how, how well they do not try this at home. They worked it. Right. When we were kids. It worked well. But, uh, came back in, came back into wrestling. I want to say it was actually when uh, Chris Jericho re-debuted with the Save Us Y2J stuff and then just caught the bug again and trying to find every single kind of wrestling I could find. Jericho was my guy. I, I loved uh first DVD I ever bought was the uh, new and approved DX, which is the 2006 return. Right. Uh, and all through that, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, I always loved watching them. Kind of caught, like, the comedy bug from that while still having the physicality in the ring. Um, and that kind of helps. In, in, nowadays, uh, Bray Wyatt was kind of is kind of my guy, the fiend. Um, anyone with actually just – The Miz with incredible mic work and just – Anything like that was just kind of just gets me going, get me gets me hyped to go into training, try new stuff, um, everything like that. Just ever since I was a kid, I wanted to do this, and now I am. Right. Uh, so you guys are done training. Uh, how many months was it before you guys got into the ring for your first match? Uh, let's see. We started training in April, and we debuted at Body Slams and Brews. Yeah, Body Slams and Brews out here in Valley Springs at the Homestead Brewery. Uh, it was August of that of 2018 is when we debuted. Right we on. We faced uh, we faced Darlin Arlen and the lover boy Nikki Valentine in our first match. Well, give us a rundown, both of you, about that match, and <laughs> and individually give us your mentality of what you were thinking and 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 what that feeling was when you were first having your first match. It was it was a lot of nerves. I was I was I know I was a nervous wreck beforehand, but as soon as that music hit, um, for those who don't know. Uh, we, as of now, we are indeed Top Notch Entertainment of the world. Prior to that, we were known as Top Notch Security of the world. Um, so we debuted as Top Notch Security and faced those two. I tell you, Lover Boy, he, he, can, he, he can rock your world when it comes to strikes. Um, Darlin' Arlen was in a pineapple romper. I remember that. Um, it was it was a surreal feeling being out there in front of our friends, families, even teachers from school uh, came out to watch us, and we won our debut match. I threw Cole off the top rope onto Loverboy after hitting him with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex, got the one, two, three, and then uh, it's just gung-ho from there. Uh, what, what Real quick, uh, I just thought of this once you said that your teachers, you know, family – that I, I've heard Valley Springs has a really good, great following for you. What does that feel like to have that support uh, there from like you know teachers and everybody included in the city? It's it, it it's amazing. What do you think, Cole? Yeah, honestly, like <clears throat> it. There's some of my favorite shows to uh, you know to perform at because you know like 
Homestead Brew, like, it's just a, it's a great place to be. Uh, we wrestle outside right next to all the hops and all that stuff. It's just an awesome place. But then you also got, like, you know, all the people just from your hometown, like, just showing you love and, like, you know, you following your dreams. Like, it's – there's nothing compared to it. And we we'll, we'll want people from, you know, come to these shows in Valley Springs support us from – you know, they'll come from Sioux Falls, Brandon, Laverne, Rock Rapids, Iowa, um, Willow Lake, Lake, South Dakota, Carpenter, Watertown. Like they just they just flow in there to like just to cheer us on. Family and friends. I want to say uh, the last show that we had there. I want to say it was a crowd of roughly a hundred people. Right. I want to say five five people showed up that um, that I didn't know. Oh wow, that has to be a a, a lot of a positive boost. Uh, uh, mental, me- mentally, uh, and uh, just, just you know, it, it just gives a good, uh, good feeling for you. Um, so you're at your first match. You're getting in there, and uh, you go uh, that day. You get done, and then you go to your next match. Now, after you have your first match, it's kind of like you know, you kind of dust off the little bit of the the sawdust, the chips that were already given to chisel the diamond that. You know, Nick's trying to uh, put together here as a tag team. Give us uh, the the full detail, the story, how it started going with your next match, all the way up to. And I found out that you guys had a title match pretty recently. Uh, what was it like getting up to that first title, uh, that title match from the, after your first match? Uh, after our first match, I want to say our next one was actually our debut solo matches against Lover Boy and Nikki Valentine. And uh, Darlin Arlen, um, sad to say, they did come out on top there. It was a little screwy. Um, I don't think the, the 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 loss was the victory for them was clean, if you will. But we just kind of kept grinding to it. Eventually, we had a uh, tag team title match against Team Awesome. They were the more experienced team, and they came out on top there. Um, looking more down the road, we had a tag team title match against uh, the pack, which was Terrence Wolf and John McElfield Long at our, in our hometown. And um, I, I made Terrence Wolf tap, but the referee came out and said that uh, we threw John McElfield Long over the top rope. It was Amanda, wasn't it? Um, it was. I want to say it was Amanda that came out there. Mm. Um, uh, but, no, no, no. Actually, I think that was uh, referee Phil because he um, – I don't think he walked oh, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're we right, were a little right. upset that uh, we did not win in front of our, uh, our hometown. And uh, the referee, uh, he kind of felt the fury of top notch security. Um, had to get kind of carried out there. We, we were a little uh, little angry at the time. Uh, and then keep going. We keep grinding away. We go to Super. Or we go to. Uh, Midwest All Pros Super Summer Sizzler Series with Jonathan Coachman. Mm. Um, Jonathan Coachman had a match against Eugene. And at one point, um, a, a, a gal from the front row, Amanda Mensing, came out and decided to get in the ring. And that's that's not good. That's not good for her safety. That's not good for the safety of Coachman. Anything like that. So we came out and we did what we had to do. And I got the taste slap out of my mouth and we carried her out of there um my face hurts thinking about it actually i saw i saw the video uh, that that wasn't just a uh uh uh, uh, like a a 360 like kind of slap that was going all the way down to the the, uh, southern border coming back up to south dakota and getting you right in the old uh the old kisser uh that was a pretty hefty slap yeah all my sunglasses went flying. My whistle flew out of my mouth. I have a whistle for those who don't know. Um, oh, we know. We've been at the show. You've, you've been proud. <laughs> Everyone loves the whistle. Oh, yeah. Everyone loves the whistle. <laughs> so uh, we go through that. And then we go for a uh, – we're in a four corners tag team match for the number one contendership of the Harrisburg Tag Team Champions at the next Super Summer Sizzler Series event. And uh, Amanda, I believe she thought we were we were cheating – but um, I don't think that happened. She comes out. She yells at us again. We try to get her out of there because, you know, we don't want to get hurt. We don't want anyone else to get hurt. And then uh, Rough Country won an opportunity at Supermania to face Texan champions, which was 
Uh, ended up being that night, uh, Dirty Rock, Dirty Jeff and Rock and Rob McFall. Then I believe we, uh, we faced them down in Vermilion, came up a little short, which, uh, you know, your stomping grounds down there. Up in North Dakota too. Up in North Dakota, up in Dickinson. We, we wrestled there as well against them. Came up short again, but then we get to body slams and brews in Valley Springs again. Um, we, there was a little mishap in there. I ended up, I believe I covered the illegal person on their team. And then Dirty Jeff covered Cole. And to our surprise, Amanda was out there. And she counted the three for us. Mm -hmm. After a lot of deliberation, the match restarted. Uh, we walked away with the tag team titles. Uh, so we were, we are now, we were your Harrisburgers tag team champions of the world. And then we get to Supermania. Because, and uh, Commissioner Daggs decided to um, strip us of our titles since Eugene should not have given us an extra five minutes, according to him. And then we go into our match. Uh, it's a, end up being a triple threat with Dirty Rock and Rough Country. Uh, Rough Country is Lucky Lund and Big Bubble Lund. And uh, they decided to take Cole's Jesus piece and uh, use that to win the, win the match. And they won the tag titles. Yeah. Uh, you know, it got... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cole, what ha what happened there with with the Jesus piece? Yeah, you know, it's uh, you know, I always wore my Jesus piece out to the ring, you know, just kind of give me some like moral support, you know, stuff like that. And all of a sudden, yeah, and then the match happens, and uh, I can't find it. And, yeah, you just see Lucky Line just running off with it, and yeah, I still haven't seen it. So I'm going back. So we decided at that point, you know, we we completed what we. Felt that we could do with top-notch security. Uh, did enough side hustle security gigs, saving up enough money. Cole uh, showed me a bit of his mixtape, and it's uh, been top-notch entertainment since then. Redebuted against the Enforcers, and uh, took them out in a matter of, I want to say, 15 seconds. And uh, hit, a, hit our album drop finish on them. Went into the... First ever tag team Royal Rumble came up a little bit short there, but I did get to work with Donnie Pepper Cricket, which was just a, a joy. Hall of Famer Di uh, Donnie Pop Pepper Hall Cricket, huh? Yep. Okay. Oh, Hall of Famer Donnie Pepper Cricket. Amazing dude to work with. And uh, at the last show, we did have our ta another tag team title match. And that was at the, uh, uh, was that at the Christmas at the Chaos? Match. Yes, Christmas Chaos. And um, Cole, why don't you tell them a little bit what happened in that match? We we had a we had a little bit of a present for Team Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, you know it felt pretty festive. So you know I brought out a brought out a present for Team Awesome. We got got him a couple bangs. We had a little bang party before before. Um, I advise uh, maybe not chugging a birthday cake bang before a match, but to, to, it was the season. So it gave you, know, you the wrong type of bang. Is what you're saying? Oh, I, I was, uh, I was bouncing off the ro off the walls for sure. It wasn't just bouncing off the ropes in the ring. I was bouncing off the walls, ceiling, floor, everywhere. So basically, it was a boing instead of a bang, and you wanted a bang exactly. instead of a boing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Just bing, want to clarify. Bing, bang, boing, yeah. You bing, bang, boom, bang, boing. Yep. Just want to clarify that one. Yeah. No. It was. Uh, it was a hard fought battle though between us and Team Awesome, and you know, we, yeah, we had Ronnie down. One, two, three, four, four five, five six, whatever, seven, you know. Eight. And, uh, yeah, I look over, and Amanda's outside, you know, tending the Nitro, and she should have just stayed in the ring. She counted the three. And, uh, yeah, next thing I know, I look up, and Jack's getting rolled up, and Nitro's got my ankle. I can't do nothing. And, yeah, we ended up losing. And then, uh, yeah, after that, Amanda wants to get all, you know, big and bad on us and uh, yeah, threaten us. Yeah, yeah, I just <laughs> – Blows my mind. It's so, I mean, for, for the listeners that don't know who Amanda is, now this is referee Amanda Messing, correct? Yes. Correct. She, she okay. basically went from uh, slapping me in the face in the front row to uh, cost us titles. Yep, being a referee so, at Midwest All Pro. So my, my question is, is, okay, so how is, if you have a commissioner, and you, how is this being allowed 
to happen because isn't there an unwritten rule or a written rule also that uh you know athletes um uh, you know can't touch a ref uh isn't a ref not supposed to do anything other than uphold the law and order you know i i, I think yeah I think. <laughs> as you know as the last show's title indicates it's christmas chaos i mean there's a, just when it comes to Midwest All Pro in general, there's a power struggle going on that um, that I that I got. I want to see where where it's going to go because uh, things are heating up between Dags and Eugene. Okay, so I, I seen that, and then you know after Christmas Chaos, now you got that next event that's on the 26th. Uh, I think if I'm correct, door opens at one o'clock. Uh, the show starts yep. at two that that afternoon uh, at the yeah, Icon and Lounge. A, uh, yeah, and after the show, there is a special viewing party after after the show as well. Okay. Um, my question is, is with with Amanda getting into these matches with you, and I I think you've already had enough confrontation and kind of bad blood towards some of the other like Rough Country, maybe Dirty Jeff. Um, you know, with the competition is heating up. Uh, are you kind of mad uh, at the fact that she keeps consistently <laughs> coming in? to these matches and i mean do you know what the deal is because as somebody that's been to some of these shows i'm confused i i don't get it all i know is is i've i know that she's a ref and then all this started happening what is the backstory i, I honestly I, I i i'm so confused at what's going on i mean after the last show we get you know I, i've been hit in the face hit everywhere numerous times by amanda every time we get to the back and i just scream out are you kidding me I, I don't know. Apparently, this uh, we, we were told to watch out because Arya is coming. Like I, I've seen Game of Thrones. Like I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a fictional character. I don't know who this Arya is supposed to be, or why she's coming for Easy C, coming for myself, coming for everyone. Well, let's ask. <laughs> let's let's ask Easy C. Uh, what what is your outtake on this? What are you your thoughts? Yeah, all right. So, I think she might just be jealous. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It's 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 a tough spot. You know, it's it seems like every time that you know we, we we get close, like we get there, we're just about to, you know, get the titles back, and then all of a sudden she's just not there. She's just off doing something else. Oh. We cheated. Oh, all this, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's just a mess. You know what? She can bring Arya. She can bring whoever she wants. Like, we got to get this shit figured out. Where did this all start? I mean, I'm going to ask both of you this question uh, because this has been consistently happening for quite, uh, quite a few events here, quite a few matches that you've been having. Um, can you pinpoint exactly where this started? Uh, uh, yeah, it would go back to that uh, Super Mania when uh, she decided to run in the ring. Yep, it was the uh, the Super Summer Sizzler series. As I said, yeah, that was right. That that was with Coachman. That would have been at the Icon out out at their outdoor venue part. Um, and then you got uh, Super Mania. Then it just after that that Sizzler uh, series, it just keep you know building up, festering. Um, yeah, I, what was I, the whole I, idea with that whole getting in the ring part? I mean. Uh, you know, other than you doing your jobs, you know, and yeah, being part yeah. of the performers, um, to yeah, me... Not only being performers. Right. Not only being performers, but being security there, right. too. You know, we did we had multiple hats on the, that night. And from what we saw, um, she was started yelling at Coachman. And, you know, Coachman, as seen on, you know, WWE Television, Sports Center, ESPN, anything like that. You know, he is a A-list star, and the last thing we want to do is for a crazy fan to jump in the ring and hurt him. So we did what we had to do, and we and he told us, get her out of here. Yes, Mr. Coachman. We ran out there. We got her out of the ring. Uh, she slapped me in the face. We carried her out. Next time, she comes out, yelling at us. Cole tells her off. I get hit. We carry her out. It's, it's rinse and repeat at this point. You know, you would think that, you know, uh, management, you know, commissioner would kind of handle that situation a little bit 
uh, and, and get a little bit of the uh, law and order, like I said, uh, under control. Um, so going from here and moving forward, uh, what are you expecting the 26th to, to be like? Because, uh, you know, Amanda said that Arya is going to be there. So what what are your thoughts uh, moving forward on this? Get championships. We got to get them belts, get them straps. We got the chains. We got the rings. We got the bling. We need the belts. Doesn't matter who we're going to be facing. Our whole goal is to get back to those Harrisburgers tag team titles. But you, I understand that getting the championships, but wouldn't you need to deal with whatever this situation is with first? Because this might be a repeated process of what happened I mean, these last couple times, wouldn't you think? Yeah, yeah, I mean, there, there's a chance. Um, you know, I guess uh, I, I'm not I'm not too one. I, I'm not one much for planning. I, I just kind of take stuff as it comes. So I guess like we'll just we'll just we'll have to figure something out like when it happens. You know, yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll talk to the the boss man and the queen herself, Nick Dinsmore, Stephanie Dinsmore, and uh, see what we can do to you know protect ourselves and not only the other talent there i mean top-notch entertainment is trying to do what's best do what's right and if she wants to keep getting our faces who knows well just like you know our boy xavier woods always say is top-notch keep it tight uh i i'd like to uh wish you well uh on your event on the 26th uh at the icon lounge in sioux falls like i said the uh, door opens at one o'clock uh, the show starts at 2, and then you have an after-show viewing uh, special party after the uh, the event. Um, guys, thank you once again for being on the show. Uh, good luck with everything that's going on. I hope that you end up, you know, working your hardest and getting those titles. Uh, but, you know, you're going to have to, my opinion, might have to handle this situation uh, so you oh, can yeah. get those titles. And, uh, you know, I think you can do it. I think uh, you can get the situation handled. The guys sound like you have things under control um once again guys uh why don't you give the listeners uh a little information on where they can find you on twitter facebook uh and instagram or all those social media accounts uh cole uh bratland i know that you told me uh, a little bit before we went in studio that you don't have twitter uh it's 2020 probably step up your game a little bit son <laughs> uh but go ahead and tell the the listeners where they can find you uh, you can find us on Facebook, Top Notch Entertainment of the World. Uh, like, go give us a like on there. You can find me at that Jack Kruger on Twitter at Big Crew Thirteen on Instagram. Uh, we post all kind of. I kind of post where we are at, what's going on with Top Notch uh, over there. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, just stuff like that. And. Uh, yeah, then you can always find our upcoming events at MidwestAllPro.com, Midwest All Pro Facebook page. And, uh, you know, just thinking if we got referee Amanda going against us, I, I, I you know, uh, DJ Barbecue, I think you know a referee if uh, if we need someone who can be fair and just. I, I might know uh, 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 one uh, a little more than uh, the other one that I know. But, yeah, I, m I might have a, a little suggestion that I might uh, be able to put out there. Um, uh, I might – I might call. I might call the boss lady. I might call the the boss man, uh, and 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 see what happens. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, but uh, right now, I think uh, we had a great show. Uh, I appreciate that you guys come on. Uh, good luck to you on the twenty sixth. Uh, you know, uh, all I gotta say is, uh, you know, Aria, if you're out there, you can come on the show and uh, give your your side of the story. Uh, I don't know who you are. I don't know if anybody else does. I'd like to get to know you, uh, your story on this because I'm a little confused uh, what's going on with uh, with the situation. That being said, I am DJ Barbecue. This is the Code I Radio Network. This is Uncut Live, the top show as of now. I guess I can brand this as the top notch show of podcast because we had top notch entertainment of the world on. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have a good night and peace. I'm out. Uncut Live is brought to you by KBack.rocks. Rock radio the way rock radio should be. Go to KBackRadio.com and listen today. Jekyll and Hyde Barbecue, our brothers from another mother, they make barbecue so good. Mm -hmm.
Mmm, it'll put a smile on your face. Remedy Brewing Company. It's the remedy for what ails you. And Midwest All Pro Wrestling. Go to MidwestAllProWrestling.com and get tickets and feel the excitement.